In this video, we're going to review how you can open the terminal to start editing some Java files, compile the Java files, and actually run your first program. This first exercise will be very simple because we're just kind of easing into Java, so we're going to create a very basic program to start. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open up our terminal. Now you can get to this by going to Finder, uh, Applications, and then you go into Utilities. Down at the bottom you'll find Terminal, and if you double click Terminal, you should see a window like this. If it doesn't look exactly like this, not to fret, you can go into Terminal, Preferences, and you can change what this looks like by going into Profiles and you can see there are a lot of different options here. I like this black and green one, it kind of makes me feel like a hacker, so I usually go with this. You can select which one opens with new, uh, new, uh, new executions just by selecting it from this list. Now, once you're in your command line window, your terminal here, we can actually figure out where we are on the system by typing pwd and hitting enter. That's print working directory. So you can see I'm in a folder under users called Timothy R. James, which is my username. So if I want to create a new folder that I'm going to use for my projects, I'm going to type mkdir, we'll just call it Java projects. And then I hit enter. Now that creates a new directory. Most commands in the terminal, when they succeed and they don't have any issues, they just return right to the command line. So if I go into Java projects, CD Java projects, that's change directory, Java projects, and hit enter, you'll now see that I'm in a new directory. And if I type PWD now for print working directory, you'll see users, Timothy R. James, Java projects. So that's good. We're now currently in the right directory. We're going to create our first file. We're going to use an editor called Nano. We like to use text editors because they don't insert any special markup or any crazy characters into our files. So we're going to type Nano my first class dot Java. And I'm going to hit enter. I like the Nano editor because it's very simple and easy and uh, anything that you need is down here at the bottom. So it's very easy to understand what you're doing. If I want to leave the Nano editor, I just hit Control X. You can see down here at the bottom it says Control X to exit. And that takes me right back to my command line. So if I type Nano my first class dot Java again, that will take me back in. If I want to save my file, I hit Control O. You can see right out here that just saves the file. So I'm going to start off by creating the most simple class I can. Class, my first class, and that's it. Hit Control O to write that out, and hit Enter, and you have a class. So it's very important that the M, the F, and the C are all uppercase, and the other letters are all lowercase, just like you have in your file name here. Now if I hit Control X, I'm going to type Java C, my first class, dot Java. And if everything goes according to plan, I should have a new file there. So I'm going to type ls to list the files that I have in my current folder. I, and you can see here I have myfirstclass.java, which is what I created, and myfirstclass.class, .class, which is what is compiled. So the Java compiler, this Java C, takes some source file like myfirstclass.java, compiles that into a class file, myfirstclass.class. .class. Now if we were to look at the myfirstclass.class .class file in our nano editor, it wouldn't be so pretty. You know, we've got a lot of weird stuff in here. And that's because this is a language that the Java Virtual Machine can understand when it's loading new files. So this isn't very useful. Let's go ahead and hit Control X so that we can get out of that. We don't want to modify that file. Unfortunately, this myfirstclass.java doesn't do anything too useful or interesting. So we're going to want to change that. So I'm going to open it again by typing nano myfirstclass.java. And we're going to change this around a little bit. So, so far we've defined a class, and a class is just a description of something we're going to use in our program. In Java, everything kind of becomes a class some one way or the other. So all of our files, we're going to deal with uh, these Java files that contain classes. Now I'm going to make this public, which means that it can be used outside of this file. So other files can refer to this class. We'll get more into what public means and what private means and all of the distinctions there later. But for now, we're going to create one method in this class. We're going to say public static void main. And then we're going to create a parameter and we're going to use more curly braces. Just for reference, the curly braces are right next to your P key. They're the little curls. So you have to hit shift to enter them, but we have an opening one and a closing one. Every time we open one, like this character here, we're going to close one like this character here. So you can see I have an opening here and I have a close here. Now it's 
generally good practice to indent, so I'm just going to type two spaces before these lines. Just makes your code a little bit easier to read, which is going to become very important later. Now here you can see we have public again, and that just means that this this method, this this uh, little bit of code that I'm defining can be used outside of the application. We'll talk about static and void later. Main is the name of the method and it takes an argument or, or an array uh, of strings as its parameter or as its argument. We'll talk more about all of those things later. Right now just assume that we need to do this to make our program. If we write a Java program this is the only way it will actually work. Now I'm going to hit enter, I'm going to type two more characters, and I'm going to type system.out.println. So I'm going to use another class that's written, it's built into Java called system. I'm going to use a property of that class called out, and I'm going to use a method on that called println. Now it's not actually spelled out println, it's p-r-i-n-t-l-n, just as you see on the screen here. And we're going to type uh, our open, uh, we're going to type parentheses here and we're going to insert in between these two parentheses our open and close parentheses this is not a hello world program we are cooler than that so typically in most languages when you create it or when you get into a new language you write a hello world program but that's usually the example we usually use at the beginning of any of these. So I'm not going to be cliche here. We're not going to write a Hello World program. We're going to write an anti-Hello World program. But if you've done this and you've written system properly, system with a capital S, dot out, dot print line, then notice that everything in this, in this uh, string, everything in the text that I'm outputting is enclosed in these double quotes. If we do that much and we end the statement with a semicolon and we write out our file, and we hit control X to leave. If we type Java C, my first class dot Java, and we type Java, my first class, no extension, no extra characters here, and hit enter, you will see we have a value here. We have exactly what's what's listed here. So there are a couple of things that you can go wrong here. If we open our file again, I'm going to deliberately introduce some errors. What if we, for, exi for example, we forget or we omit that last double quote? If we try to compile, we're going to run into an error. And you can see here, unclosed string literal. What this is saying is that you've opened a string, but you haven't actually closed it. What the literal part of that means is literal means that we are literally specifying a string. It's not a variable. We're telling the system what the string should be. It's also saying, you know, since this isn't closed, everything looks like a string. So now this semicolon doesn't exist because it exists as part of the string. It's no longer part of the language. It's actually part of the string itself. So that's a problem too. And then since we never closed our string, everything is kind of enclosed in that. So we've reached the end of the file. So that's why we get three errors for this very simple problem. But the most important one is the first one that's encountered. So if we go back into our file and we remove or we add that second double quote, now when we try to compile, we shouldn't run into those problems. Now we can also have other problems like one of the pr problems that comes up often is what if you, you know, for example, have a typo in main. Instead of main, you name it MAME. So you can see here now it's M-A-I-M -M instead of M-A-I-N. If I now write that out, control O and control X, and I try to compile this, going to compile fine but when I try to run it it's going to tell me there's no main method it's looking for a method named main when it wants to run my program and I don't have one so that's not going to work so what we need to do now is change that back another thing that can go wrong if you for example don't put the right cases in your file name or maybe you give it a completely wrong file name if we try to compile this now, it will not compile because it's telling me my first class needs to be in a file called myfirstclass.java. What that really means is I've created this file called myfirstclass with a capital M, F, and C, but it hasn't matched that in the file. So we're going to go ahead and change that back so we can compile and run this. Now we can compile, 
we run our class and we get our response we get the text here so now I should have both of the files my Java file and my class file and I should have my first simple program here so this should get you at least started writing programs uh, and in future lessons will get more and more complicated thanks for watching and practice your coding